um, move yourself into that realm of enthusiasm and get around devotees who are enthusiastic, then you move very quickly on the process of devotional service. And um, this is required in order to uh, advance. If you're lethargic, then uh, you will forget. And now we have our five-minute Bhagavad Gita class given by uh, His Grace Srivatsa Prabhu. And he's going to uh, come up here and present to us a predetermined verse that he has uh, been looking at. And so if, if we could bring another chair, please. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadari Yashoda Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari I'll be looking at the ninth verse, uh, ninth, ninth chapter, thirteenth verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Mahatmanastu Mamparta Daivim Prakrita Mashrita Bajantyananya Manaso Nyatva Bhutadim Avyayam O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. In this verse, the description of the Mahatma is clearly given. The first sign of the Mahatma is that he is already situated in the divine nature. He is not under the control of the material nature. And how is this affected? That is explained in the seventh chapter. One who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, at once becomes freed from the control of the material nature. That is the qualification. One can become free from the control of material nature as soon as he surrenders his soul to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That, that is the preliminary formula. 
Be, being marginal potency, as soon as the living entity is freed from the control of material nature, he is put under the guidance of the spiritual nature. The guidance of the spiritual nature is called Daivi Prakriti, Divine Nature. So when one is promoted in that way by surrendering to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one attains to the stage of great soul, Mahatma. The Mahatma does not divert his attention to anything outside of Krishna, because he knows perfectly well that Krishna is the original Supreme Person, the cause of all causes. There's no doubt about it. Such a Mahatma or great soul develops through association with other Mahatmas, pure devotees. Pure devotees are not even attracted by Krishna's other features, such as the four-armed Mahavishnu. They are simply attracted by the two-armed form of Krishna. They are not attracted to other features of Krishna. Nor are they, um, nor are they concerned with any form of a demigod or of a human being. They meditate only upon Krishna and Krishna consciousness. They are always engaged in the unswerving service of the Lord in Krishna consciousness. So in, in this shloka, Prabhupada describes the meaning of Mahatma. Usually in society we see today that uh, there's a Mahatma Gandhi and so society gives the name of Mahatma to someone who's, um, who's done a great social deed. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna states that a Mahatma is someone who is under the control of his Daivi Prakriti or divine nature. Uh, the divine nature is uh, basically the internal potency of the Lord, or in other words, Srimati Radharani. And uh, we as jivas are the marginal potency of the Lord. The marginal potency of the Lord, uh, Prabhupada describes it with an analogy of um, the ocean, the beach. There's the part of that one part of the beach that's sometimes covered by the ocean water and sometimes not covered. And that's where we are in the whole picture. Then there's the external potency of the Lord, which is the material nature. We are right now are under the control of the material nature, which is the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And um, the person behind the three modes of material nature is Durga Devi or Maya Devi. This Maya is known as Mahamaya, and uh, that's why this world is known as Durgam. Durgam means prison, uh, prison house. So what Durga Devi does is she holds a trident, and she, um, she attacks people with her trident. The trident has... Uh, three um, three sharp ends on it, and the three sharp ends stand for each of the three types of miseries. The three types being Adhyatmika, Adi Bhautika, and Adi Daivika. Adhyatmika is um, miseries caused by the mind, and Adi Bhautika is miseries caused by other living entities, and Adi Daivika is miseries caused by the devatas through natural calamities such as earthquakes, tsunamis, etc. So basically, this material nature is very strong, which is shown um, by which Krishna states in the shloka, uh, which basically states that the material nature is very, very hard to overcome. But simply by surrendering unto Krishna, it's, everything becomes easy and one can easily cross over the material nature. Uh, Prabhupada also states that in the um, in the purport when he refers to the seventh uh, uh, verse in the seventh chapter, um, Prabhupada also states that um, another characteristic of a Mahatma is that um, he always thinks of Krishna. Everything he does is directed towards Krishna, and that Mahatmas can only be developed through the association of other Mahatmas, which shows how lucky we are that Prabhupada came to the U.S. and sp started the ISKCON movement because now whenever we go anywhere, there's always a temple that we could go to. And at the temple, there's always great devotees that we can associate with. And simply through their association, we can make huge milestones. So the, three, the external potency, the marginal potency, and the internal potency are all controlled by the Lord. This is um, stated by Prabhupada in the... Um, in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, in one of his purports, he, he quotes from the Svita Shvatara Upanishad, and he states that basically um, the Yoga Maya and Maha Maya are both under the jurisdiction of the Lord. And Prabhupada goes more into depth with that with another analogy that um, just as electricity can be able to uh, cause something to cool down through like an AC or cause something to heat up through a heater, uh, Krishna also, just by himself, he can be able to control Yoga Maya and Maha Maya as well. And 
everything is ultimately under his control. Mahamaya though, um, Mahamaya though is, um, comes into effect when we try to put um, our own effort into make, trying to find some sort of happiness in this material world, which simply is impossible. That's, uh, that topic is covered by Radhe Shyam Prabhu in one of his lectures, in which he states that there are two types of people in this world. One type, uh, when Maya Devi pokes them with her stick, uh, they turn around and they go to Krishna, and they, they surrender unto Krishna, saying, Krishna, I'm all yours now. And um, Krishna, I'm all yours now, and please let me be yours. And just like that, they're able to cross over the, over the jurisdictions of material nature, and they're able to become Mahatmas, because they un enter under the, under the control of the divine nature, or Devi Prakriti. But then there are the other type of people who turn around and wage a war against Maya. And basically, what that means is that they're trying to find some sort of happiness in this world, which is simply impossible. So, all we have to do is do everything that Krishna wants us to do by surrendering unto Him. And that is luckily given to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we could participate in a Sankirtan movement. And by participating in a Sankirtan movement, we could we could please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we could transcend the three modes of material nature and therefore enter under the control of Daivi Prakriti and be liberated. Hare Krishna. Just a note, he ended exactly at five minutes. So now, uh, please, uh, first, we're going to give some... Uh, positive feedback, things that worked well, and then uh, any room for improvement that you saw, and then uh, we'll end with uh, things that went well. Uh, I, I could see that he was well prepared. That made the whole uh, lecture very good. Yeah. Well prepared and also wasn't overly dependent on notes. He, he, it's, the preparation showed because it, it, it came out from a, a deeper level than, than simply memorization. It was well thought out. I really liked how his philosophy was so rich and very authentic. Like he could refer to the shlokas and Prabhupada's examples and explain it with conviction. So that uh, showed that he has heard and listened a lot of lectures. And that was more convincing, following the parampara. Very parampara, yeah. I liked how he knew so many verses uh, with the same meaning. Yes, they all inter interlocked. Now, uh, please give uh, room for improvement. Yes. One thing I noticed is that you have your bead bag and you were fiddling with your beads, so that that's happens probably. We don't understand what we are doing, so maybe next time you know you can do. <laughs> yeah, the body when you you can be aware more of your you know how you're holding yourself is a more advanced level of public speaking. But when you do that, then it, it, uh, it helps the audience to accommodate more and calm down. If you become a little nervous in your um, the hand movements and things like that, then everyone else gets distracted. So that's a good feedback. What else? One more. Room for improvement. Give him a little gift. Yes? A little bit more eye contact will help. I think it was due to nervousness again. Yeah, sure. Little, uh, little eye contact. And again, it's, it's more just uh, the mechanics of relating to the audience and stuff. Easily refined. Okay, now two more that are uh, uh, things that uh, went well. Yes, Melanie? We make a sandwich. Inside there's room for improvement. Okay. I like that you were so confident about what you were speaking. So, I mean, it was not just repeating what you heard, but I felt like you realized it a little bit before you spoke. So I felt, um, I felt encouraged by listening to you. Very good. One more from Kanka. Thank you. Um, I really like the enthusiasm that you have for um, feeling that the ISKCON movement that Srila Prabhupada gave us is all over the world, and no matter where you go, you can have such good association. You did well. Got really good marks. It was very well prepared, and thank you.
So you'll have to keep doing it. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you have spots where you can do it. So uh, although I'll be out of town next week, I think that we should keep doing it even while I'm away. And uh, I'll keep the format going so everyone can cycle through. Uh, actually, um, not just the kids, but everybody should have a, a chance so we can use Wednesdays going forward. Somebody can uh, help to arrange that when I'm away to make sure that that happens. Yes, okay, Sukeshri and Rishaka. Um, just organized so that the same format continues. Somebody has to keep time too. He ended right on time. I don't know how he, how he did it, but um, <laughs> it's important to keep it within that time frame because then it, it helps you to learn the respect for the particular time and it's actually harder to do it in a shorter amount of time. So thank you very much for joining us here in the live studios of ISV. And uh, for all of you who have joined from online from various places around the world, we felt your presence very deeply tonight, and we thank you for joining us. And now we're going to...